how did that person get there? Well, I have the right people to talk with to figure this out. And sitting with me in the studio, at my request, Stone Grissom, who I saw on with Fred Graham, who is a lawyer out of both the state of Washington and Missouri. And I was so impressed with Stone that I said, you're on my list, guy, and here he is. And um, they had a witness mm -hmm. who was in a room next door who probably, in his upset, made the story bigger than it was right. initially. Right. You know, I saw him, I heard an argument, I saw him dangling her over, mm -hmm. um, and, and I, I don't have any blame on the witness. When we see a traumatic incident as people, it somehow does get bigger. Oh yeah, and I think that that's evidence of this here. I mean, he ultimately recants his statement, or at least clarifies it in some way. Um, and I think that it, it would be a mistake for the defense to go after him and try to paint him as some type of liar. I mean, this is a person who was, is trying to come forward and trying to tell the truth. Um, and he is giving, I mean, the, the best piece of evidence for the prosecution is the fact that he is seeing, the defendant is seeing, uh, dangling his wife over the ledge, holding her ankles, and then ultimately lets go for whatever reason. Um, the problem is you don't know what the what led up to that. And um, also what the witness doesn't know is, that, you know, she's intoxicated. They're both extremely... They were smashed. Uh, and, 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 and on top of that, she's been smoking illegal drugs. Uh, she's got some Prozac in her. She's got this history of suicidal attempts. I mean, all of that is what leads ultimately I mean, they, they first make their conclusion, and then they investigate all this stuff. They're kind of stuck. I, I think that's it. Well, Dad, Scott Grissom, I see you and your body language shaking your head in agreement. Well, here. Yeah, and, and, and what's curious is I'm not sure how much this really advances the prosecution's case because all he's really doing is corroborating what the defendant has already stated in his tape, his two-hour tape statement. He admitted that there was a, an argument. He yes. admitted that he pulled her off the dance floor. He explained all of that. Um, so at, at some, to some level, they are saying that this man was telling the truth right after the incident, and he denied killing her or having any, anything to do with her death other than trying to save her off the, off the ledge. So. I think the hardest uh, fact for the defense, and it's what usually happens when a defendant talks, is this <laughs> idea that she was somehow in mid-flow and he grabbed her by right. the ankles. That didn't happen. Well, that's that's somewhat incredible. That's an incredible yes. fact that he, he was Superman and, and reached out and grabbed her ankles. Um, but given her history, once that's explained and given this, this high and low, almost bipolar, um, type of personality that she has at one moment she's really having a good time at the next moment she's almost suicidal and given the fact that earlier in the day she had already to some degree embarrassed herself in front of her son had told her grandchild oh, that's, a, that's a hideous story oh yeah and we'll, and we'll get to that story because that really to you stone and let me put on my prosecutorial hat okay. um, or I'll channel one of the other anchors <laughs> <laughs> I'll just go this way look they've had a fight mm -hmm. they've been drinking they go upstairs. They're fighting more. And he has he is the only possible person who could have done this. Right. And we have a witness who is down the hall who says he sees uh, Mr. Dane with the wife's feet dangling. Well, that's, you know, as my producer Gideon Hayes has said to me, the only time you see one of those things happening is like little kids, you know, where the older brother dangles the little brother or the little sister. I guess we could say we saw it with Michael Jackson. Right. Um, but <laughs> the reality is, is that those are good facts for the prosecution. It's not like she threw herself over this balcony. Well, I um, mean, that's that's where you're presupposing something. I think that you're you're putting the cart before the horse a little bit. Yes, he's the only person that could have done this if this is a crime itself. Yes. Um, you also have a woman who uh, has marijuana in her system, Prozac, Fair a long enough. history. She's extremely intoxicated. Um, even earlier this day, she was somewhat suicidal, arguably suicidal. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, she's leaning over the edge by on, on her own. In fact, a witness says that he did not see Christopher Dane, the defendant, first. I mean, he saw him coming up behind her while she was already leaning over the ledge. It's not a hard leap to say that something happened and it could have been just as easily an accident as easily as it could have been a crime. Which, of, she, which of course, once you do that and we should try such a feat, I don't believe they could do it without help, especially if they are drunk. Now, I think Joyce makes a persuasive argument, but I'm not sure about the size of that railing, which is why I wanted to look at it. Yeah, my understanding is the railings are 42 inches tall. That's three and a half feet. She's about 5'5". Five, five. Um, I think she's actually smaller than that. I think she's closer to 5'2", if I'm five not mistaken. 5'2", two, five, three. So that it probably puts it up to her sternum. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, she makes a great point, and I think that that raises to the level of suspicion. 
but uh, this is a heavy drinker. This isn't the first time she was drunk. I no, mean, no, she's, she's, she's been drunk all day, and she uh, has a long history of, of, of this medication. And so she she's not your typical first-time drunk, middle-aged woman. Uh, so she is probably st stumbling around. Um, it's not inconceivable that that person in a three-and-a-half-foot railing could also lose her balance, slip, or even be doing something reckless herself up on that on that railing it's an either or I mean I'm not saying that, that that's exactly what happened we don't the, know exactly the what prosecution happened. can't prove that that's not what happened yeah indeed and Isabel we're dealing with all of the substances that were in this woman's body and Stone Grissom one of the things that we learn in this particular case is I keep being reminded of that movie Leaving Las Vegas the one that starred Nicolas Cage and Elizabeth right. Shue and this just tawdry, sad uh, life that this alcoholic led and that she was brought right into it and she was a prostitute and 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 the the this is a woman this was a, a housewife this was a mother but their life had become their lives had become very dissipated right and I think uh, what what we probably haven't heard yet from the viewers that she this all started back in 1991 when she was hit and injured by a case of Gatorade apparently at work and correct it hit, hit her, her head on. and she's lived a lot life of, of constant pain and, and, and she was fired from her job and, and she started abusing alcohol. So right, and she's trying to get rid of the pain for all of these years and the result is people do that, that they get prescription drugs, then they get other drugs, then they get alcohol and anything to relieve this terrible pain which of course caused a terrible, terrible effect on right. their marriage. Oh, and, and on the family, the strain yes, of the of course. family too with all the kids talking about how they're just watching their, their mother and, and to some degree that the defendant watching his wife just spiral out of control. Now he's obviously not, not the biggest choir boy in the world. Well he's, that's why it reminds me of leaving Las Vegas because you get enablers of yeah. one another. And he's walking down the path with her to some degree. Um, it, it, it makes this case a little sadder and, and, and both of the, the parties a little more sympathetic and, and, and you just you kind of look at this as a this huge family tragedy that shouldn't have happened. Well that's a better way to look at it than a quote unquote trashing of the victim. Oh yeah absolutely. I mean I think you, as a defense attorney you walk some type of a fine line between showing the past of the victim, you don't want to you don't you don't want to be perceived by the jury as beating her up no. or, or trying to smear her character in some way. I think you're not getting that in this case because you really need to bring out that aspect, the, the aspects of her past or history, the spiraling, the the. the the volatile nature of her uh, emotional state and her attempted suicides in the past it's all really yeah. very sad I I want to thank you for coming in I mean I know that you're not here that often I hope whenever you are here that you uh, cross the same path that I do I'd Absolutely. love to have you back with me again love being here it was really a treat thank you so much and for all of you this